Hi, this is Mike Carter with Carter Crafts. I wanted to talk a little bit about Damascus. I get a lot of questions about Damascus when people see my knives on the table at the, at the shows. And a lot of people don't really understand, or people that are not, not that familiar with knives don't really understand what Damascus is and how that pattern uh, is created in the knife blade. Damascus gets its name from where it was believed to have originated in Damascus, Syria. And the original Damascus is what they sometimes call Wootz steel. Um, really, how they made that has been lost. Nobody really knows for sure. Uh, some people think they figured it out and recreated it. Maybe they have. I don't know. Uh, but what we call Damascus today is really forge welded steel or forge welded metal um, where they take several layers of different types of metal forge weld them together and then generally they draw it out and fold it several times every time you fold it you double the amount of layers in the metal and then usually when it's all finished, after it's been ground and finished, it's put into an acid bath. And the acid will darken some of the metals and, some in, and not others. And it'll darken some types of metal more than other types. And this is what makes the pattern show up. Now, for example, the Damascus that I typically use uh, is made by Brad Weiss of Alabama and Damascus. And I buy a billet like this in the thickness that I want. And then I'll cut it and grind it and heat treat it and, you know, make my knife from this. Now you can see the pattern on this piece of Damascus. It's kind of a raindrop pattern. And, you know, this piece has been etched already so that you can see the pattern when you know when people like me when you're buying it you want to know what you're getting and this just makes the pattern show up really well after it's cut and ground you're grinding a lot of that pattern or the etching off now this is a Damascus blade that I've already heat treated and finished ground finish grinding it and this this blades ready to etch but as you can see right now you can see the pattern in just the right light but it's pretty much all just kind of a silvery looking blade and that's how it looks after I grind it after you etch a blade in an acid bath then you can see the pattern again because the black areas are where the acid has darkened the metal and the silver lines, the bright lines, are actually nickel which will not darken in the acid. So that gives us our pattern back. After I ground it and before I etched it, it looked just like this blade. But after etching, you can see it darkened down, and you really see the pattern very well. I'm going to attempt to demonstrate this process using some modeling clay. And I have uh, four different colors of clay here. So I'm going to try and show you how that pattern is created using these uh, different colors of clay. Okay, I've got uh, four pieces of modeling clay here in different colors. And these would represent different types of metal. And let's say, for instance, we had 1095 and 1084 and, and uh, uh, say 15 and 20 or, or whatever. Uh, I mean, it, it can be various types. Sometimes they only use two types of metal. Sometimes they use four or five. Um, and let's say the yellow represents the nickel. And for instance, when uh, 
Alabama Damascus makes their, their Damascus, they'll start with several layers of each of these to start with, where I'm just starting with one layer, but this should demonstrate the purpose. So if we stacked all these up, and we'd have this stack of the different types of metal here, and then these were all forged together. It would be heated up, red hot, where you can move the metal and put some flux on it so that it sticks together. And then it's actually hammered or pressed until it all becomes one piece of metal. Then it's hammered out, and as it's hammered out, it tends to be drawn out and get longer and thinner. And then you would fold it, and by folding it, I literally mean it's folded over like this and forge welded together again. So all the, the outside surfaces where they meet, they're forged together again. And again, you hammer it out and draw it out. And just for the sake of demonstration, we'll fold it one more time. Now you might have noticed when I started this, this, this had some ridges in it. That should affect the pattern that you'll see when I get to that point. But these can just be hammered flat, or they can be hammered with dies that put different patterns into the metal when you hammer it down. And that affects the type of pattern you'll get when it's all finished. Okay, so we started with four layers. And I folded it twice. First time I folded it, that meant I had eight layers. I folded it again, so I had 16 layers. So we've got a representation of 16 layer Damascus here. Now the interesting thing is, I'm going to get this good and flat. So say this is your 16 layer Damascus. Now when you cut into that or start grinding away at it, you're going to start going down through the layers of the different types of metal. And you'll see your pattern. And that's exactly what you're seeing in Damascus steel. You're looking down through the different layers of metal, especially you can see it along the grind here. You're looking down through those different layers of different types of metal. I'll give you another example of some of the patterns. I'm going to take that piece, I, or the pieces that I just demonstrated, and I'm going to mash them all together again. I'm going to give them a little twist. I'm drawing it out. I'm going to fold it over. I'm going to twist it some more. Now 
now you're starting to see something that looks more like what you would see when you buy a billet of Damascus. You can really see the pattern in it already where it's been folded and re-welded several times. And if I cut into this, and say if I start cutting it and grinding it, you can really see where we're going down through these patterns, through these layers see the patterns and if you look here on the end of this piece you can see many many layers and if I slice down through it diagonally like you see here you see all many many layers there and as I said I typically use Alabama Damascus and this is typically made with four different types of metal um, and he starts with 13 layers of those four different types of metal several layers of each the forge welded together drawn out and folded five times and remember every time you fold it you double the layers so if you had 13 you get 26 on the first fold Second layer, you're going to get 52. Um, and the third fold, you're going to get uh, 104. Fourth fold, you're going to get 208. And when you fold it the fifth time, you're going to get 416 layers. And that's what this is. It's been folded five times where it's got 416 layers of those four types of metal. Now one other thing I hear a lot is people have the impression that Damascus is some superior steel, it's some magical, has some magical properties. And the truth is Damascus is a real general term for forged welded steel. And whether it's good or bad depends on the materials that go into it and the skill of the person who forges it. And it does take some skill to know how to do this, to get it fluxed right, to get a good weld all the way through it. If, uh, you know, if you're cutting into a piece and there's a place that didn't weld good, you'd have a big void in it, a big open space. Um, so Damascus can be good or it can be bad. There's a lot of cheap Damascus coming in from... Pakistan and India that uh, it's just not good quality stuff and there's a lot of people who make very good Damascus there are a couple who make stainless Damascus which is is really uh, an accomplishment because stainless steel is very hard to forge that's why not many people do it um, so Damascus can be good or it can be bad it's you know, just remember that's a very general term and there's even some fake Damascus out there where somebody took a piece of steel and they etched a pattern onto it, uh, laser etched a pattern onto it, a lot of different ways you can create something that looks like Damascus and it really isn't. But honestly, um, even with good Damascus, you know, my opinion is not superior. I mean, you're using basic carbon steels and Honestly, the modern stainless alloys will outperform it. I mean, I'm sure in its day, it was, it was it. It was the best thing out there, but that was a long time ago. Uh, I think there's many steels out there today that will outperform most Damascus. Um, but Damascus is unique. It's got a great look to it. I use a lot of Damascus. I sell a lot of Damascus because people like that look. It performs well. I'm not saying it doesn't perform well. It does perform very well. Um, but, uh, you know, 
in except for very rare exceptions, uh, like I said, most Damascus is not stainless. It does take some care, just like any other non-stainless steel. You do have to keep it clean and dry or keep it oiled so that it doesn't rust because it will definitely rust. It's not cared for. Uh, and there are one or two people who do make stainless Damascus. Uh, there's Damas steel. It's made in Sweden, I believe, that is a stainless Damascus. It's pretty expensive, but it's, it's really neat stuff. And, you know, as, as far as I said, the, the final step is always etching. You don't have to etch it. I could leave it like this. It just doesn't show the pattern as well. You really have to look for it and get it, hold it in just the right light to see it. But most people like to see that pattern, that unique pattern. It's like a fingerprint. Everyone's different. So that's the basic idea of it. I hope that uh, gives you a better idea of uh, how it's accomplished and what it is. This is Mike Carter, Carter Custom Knives. Thanks for watching.